this week on Uncut Gems with Slim. Dare I say it, faith is kind of black and white if we being honest. Like, girl, do you believe or do you don't? I feel like that's kind of the harsh reality of faith, right? The reality is if you don't have 100% faith, then you don't believe. New week, more gems, and you know, we got a little vibe going on today. Y'all like the visual? I put on my shirt that matched my chair. Mm-hmm. Threw on some frames. I'm feeling real good this morning. I hope y'all feeling good. Today, we're talking about a topic that is so big. We talking about faith. In the other week, we were talking about the power of the tongue and the power in your words. And I kind of mentioned how I feel like some situations are very much black and white. And I feel like faith, dare I say it, faith is kind of black and white if we being honest. And I say this because I got one piece of advice from someone a while ago and it stuck with me ever since. And they were basically saying either you believe or you don't like there's no in between because if you believe something 40 percent the other 60 percent that means you don't believe it so it's no like i kind of believe because if you kind of believe you kind of don't right so it's like you either believe or you don't and that concept kind of checks me every time when i come to an area where i'm lacking faith and i'm feeling like unsure it's like girl do you believe or do you don't do you don't do you believe or do you not i feel like that's kind of the harsh reality of faith right so if i asked you what areas in your life do you lack faith in and attach it to the idea that if you lack faith in that area that you don't have faith you might feel a little you know some type of way about it and you might be like girl that's that's not the case because I do have faith. So it's a little tricky because you can't have faith in a thing and lack, like you can have like a percentage of faith. But the reality is if you don't have 100% faith, then you don't believe 100%. Because if you don't have 100% faith, if you have 60% faith, that means 40% you don't believe it's gonna happen or 40% you just don't have faith in it. And it boils down to either you believe what God said or you don't. Um, and that can be hard to digest because sometimes you'll be like, okay, yeah, I do believe God for this, that, and the third. I'm tired of waiting. I'm confused as to why I'm taking this route to get there. <sighs> then you might have moments of doubt where you're like, man, is that really what he said? And then when you have the moments of doubt, it's kind of, you know, showing your lack of faith in that area. Also, if your actions don't show that you believe what the word says, then it's kind of revealing that to a certain degree, you don't believe what the Lord said concerning you. And anytime I encounter like a situation where I am not fully trusting God in, like I have to ask myself like, girl, do you believe what he said or not? And when I ask myself that, it kind of brings me back to the heart posture that I need in this situation. And it kind of removes that layer of doubt or it alleviates the doubt that I have in the situation. Because it's like, my answer is always going to be yes. And do I believe in what God says about me? That answer is always going to be yes. And if that answer is yes, and if that is to be true, then that means my actions have to show that when it's a situation regarding something that the Lord said about me, right? So you can have a definite yes, like, yes, I believe in God. I believe in what he says for me, what he has for me. But in those situations where it's like, ooh, yeah, I got faith, but, you know, I'm lacking some faith too. In those situations, you just have to remind yourself, like, girl, do you believe, do you not? Do you believe or do you not? And if your answer to that question is always yes, it's going to propel you to want to change your posture of lacking faith in that moment or having doubt in that moment. It's going to make you be like, okay, well, if I believe, then I shouldn't be down right now. And it'll reassure you that what you're doing 
or if you're you know believing God for something it's gonna like reassure and boost that faith so other questions that I ask myself when I need to like check my heart posture and you know alleviate some doubt in situations I'm like okay girl do you believe that you're his daughter and that he knows what's best for you the answer is gonna be yes because I know the Lord don't want to like I'm his daughter and again, I told y'all the other week, I'm a daddy's girl. And I know my daddy has my best interest at heart and all those things. So my answer is always going to be yes when it comes to, okay, does the Lord want what's best for me? That answer is going to be yes. Even if it doesn't look like it in the natural, like I know 100% that he wants what's best for me and everything is going to work out for my good. So you can also apply that concept to the things that the Lord said to you or the things that the Lord has shown you. So do I believe that the Lord has called me to be a wife and to be a mother and to be a successful business owner? The answer is yes. If I know that answer is yes, in seasons of singleness where it can be lonely or it can be stressful or child dating in general is just out here ghetto, like in those situations I can still remind myself like okay girl yeah the dating scene is ghetto but I do know the Lord called me to be someone's wife and when that happens it'll be beautiful and it'll be what's best that he wants for me so I don't need to try and rush and make it happen I don't need to try and pick and piece together my perfect man like I can trust in that he wants what's best for me. He knows me better than I do. He knows what I need better than I do because he created me. So it's kind of like a artist and when they have like a piece of artwork or even like a singer or something and they play a song for you and they're like, okay, what do you think about it? Or what would you call it? And you can give them like your interpretation of the song or the artwork then after you say that they'll tell you either the name of it or they'll tell you what the song actually meant and i say all that to say like god created you so he knows the intent that he has for your life he knows all the intricate details he knows just like it's just like an artist like you may not know for my video editors out there if you put in 0 0.02 seconds of Foley up under a video in a transition and all these different layers of editing that you do to the naked ear no one's gonna know that you did that but you know that you did it because you created it so you know every layer to that project you know every detail and the same thing with God like he created us so he knows every intricate detail of our lives and he knows what pairs well with that so if you know that he created you you know that he has all of this knowledge on you knowledge that you don't even have about yourself then it's easy to trust and have faith in the things that he says about you for me i use that as a reminder that okay yes like he knows what's best for me so in those moments in those ghetto situations when i'm getting stood up on dates like in those moments I have to remind myself like okay yeah it may not look like it right now it may not look like your girl is gonna be walking down the aisle right now with the current status of my dating life but if I know that's what he said about me if that answer is yes I can shift my perspective in those situations where it's not looking like a yes because I know what he said you know what I'm saying so I love asking myself different questions like that because it kind of realigns my perspective and alleviates that doubt obviously having faith can be hard especially when what you see in the natural doesn't align with what he said right and this is why it's so important to walk in expectation for God and not life and what I mean by that is basically sometimes we be expecting like okay I done been through heck in high water like it's about time that you know life is gonna get better because i done been through all this stuff and one thing about it life is truly like a box of chocolates you never know what you're gonna get but the beautiful thing about god is that he is the same god is yahweh he never changes his word is true and you can walk in expectation because his word can't return to him void when you have expectation for a thing you want to make sure that you lay that thing on god like you put that in for him to take care of 
right? You put your expectations in him because he's going to show up every time. He might not show up when you want him, but he's going to show up right on time. And as we're talking about faith, it brings up one of my childhood favorite verses, Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And the easy to read version actually says, faith is what makes real the things we hope for. It is proof of what we cannot see. If we skip to verse 3, it says, faith helps us understand that God created the whole world by his command. This means that the things we see were made by something that cannot be seen. So this version really makes me look at it a little bit differently, where it's almost giving like in order to bring the things that we hope for to life, we must have faith. So faith is the prerequisite for making real the things that we hope for. Since we're talking about it, if I'm hoping for marriage, then that means I have to have faith to bring that marriage to life, to make that marriage real. I have to have faith that the Lord is gonna align me with my spouse and all these different things. Like faith is the thing, faith is the action item, faith is the verb that makes the things I hope for real. And then verse three alludes to faith helping us understand that the things we see come from the Lord's command. So like the things we see in the natural come from the Lord's command. Like it comes from something that is not seen. It comes from, you know, the things that he says. We always kind of say at our church, like, I'm going to keep saying what I saw till I see what I said. And that's basically just saying, continue to, again, power the tongue. Speak the things that the Lord reveals to you, that the Lord shows you over your life, even if you don't see it in the natural. And you want to keep saying those things, commanding, declaring, and decreeing those things until you see what you saw in the spiritual, in the natural. With that being said, it's obviously not wise to inspect the impossible from the world when you should be expecting the impossible from God, from the miracle worker himself. And again, it might not happen when you want to. It might not look like how you thought it was going to look. It might not be the journey that you thought it was going to take to get there. It might not happen when you want it, but it's going to happen right on time. And the beautiful thing about his timing is that it was well thought out. It was planned and orchestrated when he thought of you. Like before you came to this earth, before you was birthed by your mama, before you was conceived by your mama and your daddy, like the Lord thought about you in, in your whole timeline of your life. He thought about the impact that you're gonna have. He thought about the people that you're gonna need to be connected with so you can fulfill his will. Like he thought about all these things. So when it comes to like trusting and having faith in his timing and things like that, it's like, think about how much planning and thought went into that. First of all, he ain't had to do as much as we had to do cause he got, you know what I'm saying? But like to think that he thought about me before I existed, that's a kind of pre-planning that like, if you think about the people who organize and be pre-planning like that, that's a lot. <laughs> and so I decided to Google faith and Google defines faith as a complete trust or confidence in someone or something. So essentially, when you have faith in a thing, it's usually easier for you to trust in it. And I feel like the more you grow deeper in your faith in God, the easier it becomes for you to trust him in all areas of your life. And I was thinking about this quote that I love. It says, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. But it's not until you as the student are ready to learn, ready to digest, ready to consume, that the teacher, the opportunity, the answer appears. And the way that I kind of unpack that quote is that the answer to your question exists, but it's not until you as a student are ready to learn, you're ready to digest, you're ready to consume, that the teacher, the opportunity, or the answer appears. And at the same token, you have to activate your faith. So faith is an action word. It's not just a, a thought or you know a statement, like it is an action verb. And at the same token, when you activate your faith, you're creating an atmosphere for God to move in your life. And faith is not always fun, it's not always cute, and it don't feel cozy and comfy all the time, but it is necessary. So this week, I wanna challenge you guys to examine the areas in your life where you're lacking faith and transparently acknowledge those areas. For me, I feel like I'm working through lacking faith in areas such as you know, my love life. <laughs> I won't say that I currently lack faith there, but there is room for me to grow 
and for me to have a deeper faith toward you know the progress of my love life child and so like i want us to be transparent examine those areas where you you really 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 could use a little bit more faith in those areas and what i want you to do with that is to try and challenge yourself to lean into it and growing that faith and trusting god more in that area and what that might look like is you asking yourself those questions when you are i don't know girl at home eating ice cream watching a rom-com and you getting sad and lonely like in that moment be like do the lord know what's best for you yes did the lord call you to be a wife or you know whatever the lord said about you ask yourself those questions and that answer should be yes and if that answer is yes then you can lean into it okay well if that's true if he said that and i believe it then why am i here why am i here lonely feeling lonely why am i here in my head feeling sad why am i having those internal battles about a thing that i know he said to be true right so i want you to examine those areas you know be transparent with yourself you know get a little deep in there and figure out the areas where you're lacking that faith and ask yourself those questions do you believe or do you not so i hope this little faith talk was beneficial to you guys as always make sure you follow us on instagram at uncut gems with slim and until next week Uncut gems.